What's up? I uh, decided to shoot this video because I've been thinking about this all. Well, I think about this topic pretty much every day because I get probably, I don't know, 50, 60, 100 questions a day regarding dilution ratios. And this topic, this the untold truth in detailing topic is concentrates and dilution ratios. Now the first and most important thing that I want to mention to you guys is when you see a dilution rate or if you buy a product and we'll just dumb it straight down for you. When you buy a product and it's supposed to be mixed with water or uh, it says that it should be mixed with water or it says that you can mix it with water and it gives you uh, some options for, you know, mix it with, you know, this amount of water and it will do this, mix it with this amount of water, it will do that. The thing, and, and for me, this should be common sense. I do not understand why more people don't have more common sense than they do, but they don't. You people, most people do not have enough common sense. So here's the bottom line. My infinite use detail juice, infinite purpose cleaner, my whole line well, that's not true. Not every product in my line has to be diluted with water. But what I'm getting at is when a manufacturer of a detailing product puts a, gives you options for how much water you should add to a product, those are suggestions. Those are only suggestions. They are not, I repeat, maybe I should get in for a close up on this. They are not, not set in stone. They are suggestions. The, the dilution ratios, you can use more or less product. And in fact, um, you know, so the My Infinite Purpose Cleaner is a perfect example for exactly what I'm talking about. So when you're cleaning something and you don't know how or you don't really know what it's going to take to fix the problem, you need to do some testing. You have to figure out what works best because if you overdo it, you're most likely going to be stripping, you know, if you're cleaning leather interior, for example, uh, you know, if you overdo it, it you could potentially uh, pull the dye right out of the leather. Uh, you could potentially, you know, damage it even more. I mean, if, if it's already dry and it's lost its elasticity and it's starting to crack up and that kind of thing, and you overdo the cleaner, you're going to just aid in further degradation of the leather. I mean, you're, you are going to damage it more by using too strong a product. So you have to try different strengths to get the, the results that you're looking for. You cannot rely solely on what the bot, the label on the bottle says. You just can't. You have to do your own due diligence and do some testing. Now I can tell you like, for example, my infinite purpose cleaner, it, one gallon dilutes up to seven gallons. So you can use one part product to, you know, seven parts water and make a gallon. That's the bottom line. When, when you are, looking to do a stronger job than that, that would be the maximum dilution ratio that I recommend. So how I generally use it for a lot of different stuff is one part product to two parts water. So one to two, um, which would essentially be 33% product, 66% water. So one part product, two parts water, pretty much gets everything I needed to do done. I don't worry about it being too strong. It's m most of the time not anywhere near weak at that dilution. It's, you know, it's, it's perfect in my opinion for pretty much everything I've ever needed it for. But my point to this whole video is 
the manufacturer, and it, it, it's not just me, it, you know, it, the products on DetailJuice.com, most of them are concentrates, uh, most of them are water-based, and you need to add water to them to get them to work, uh, not necessarily properly, but you want, you get more out of them, and that's, that's a lot of the value in my product line, is that my stuff is concentrated. You're buying a concentrate so that you can add water and make more. Most of the products out there on the market are not concentrates. So, you know, when you're comparing price or whatever, uh, just keep in mind the value in a concentrate. But when it comes to concentrates and how much, for example, you could use the infinite use detail juice the same way. So I recommend that you make a gallon of product at a time. You put, you get a gallon of water and you put two and a half ounces of the infinite use detail juice in the gallon of water, shake it up and then boom, you've got a waterless wash, a detail spray, your pre-soak, uh, your clay bar lubricant, all that cool stuff in one solution. Now, when you, uh, you, if you feel like it's not slick enough, add more. If you feel like it's too slick, don't add as much next time. I mean, when you get a concentrate and you see the label, those are suggestions. You need to do your own due diligence and put your own time in it to see what works best for you. And not necessarily just for you, but see what works best on the job that you're working on. Every job is different. I might have different dirt than you have. I might have different dirt here in Florida than you have in Wisconsin or California. I mean, your dirt may be stronger dirt. Um, you might have um, cleaner dirt. You don't even know what you have. But my point is, you can figure that shit out really easily. All you've got to do is test. Do some testing. Figure it out. Figure out what your dirt likes and what your dirt doesn't like. You don't have to stick to the manufacturer's recommendation. You do not have to do that. Now I can tell you that most of the time the manufacturer's recommendation is erring on the side of caution. It is generally not as diluted uh, with their recommendation as it can be, or maybe it's over diluted to make sure that there are no negative effects. And I can tell you from experience, I'm a pro detailer and my products are rated at pro detailer uh, equivalencies. You know, what, what I would need as a pro detailer on a certain situation. Um, like I said, with the Infinite Purpose Cleaner, I dilute that one part product, two parts water every time. Um, I, you know, if if I'm not going to add juice boost to the infinite use detail juice mixture, then, uh, and, and to be perfectly honest with you, I don't get out a measuring cup every time and do the measuring. I just mess around until it works right. I mean, that's, that's the reality. If you're, if you are trying to be cost conscious and, and, you know, do your own due diligence as far as uh, your cost to profit ratio, you do want to make, you know, make sure that you're paying attention to that kind of thing. Cause it's kind of smart to do, you know, to, to, to make sure that you're proportioning things right. But my point is I, I am to the point with my own products and, you know, with other products that I've, I've used for years and years and years that I don't necessarily need the measuring cup to figure out what exactly uh, something is going to need or, or what's going to work. I, I've already done all that testing, but if you're new to the game, you're getting into this stuff, I would not put as much effort into the dilution ratio on the bottle as I would putting effort into doing my own testing to make sure that things work for what I need them to do, if that makes sense. So next time you're wondering why something doesn't work at the recommended dilution ratio or something like that, Add more, just use more. That's the bottom line. Your product should be inside 10% of the total job. Even if you're wasting some, it should be fine. My, my cost to profit ratio has always been around 5%, but I give you guys that extra 5% as a recommendation. So you got a goal to set and you're still, you still got 90% profit in this deal. So don't worry so much about those dilution ratios. Do your own testing, figure it out for yourself.
That's the only way you're going to know if your dirt is shitty dirt or good dirt. If there's a difference in dirt, which I don't know. I'm not saying that. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a dirt dirt inspection scientist and I have not done any extensive extensive testing on different qualities or variations variations of dirt. Dirt is dirt is dirt. Um, you know, again, there stranger things have happened. You may have different dirt than I have. I don't know. So, but I do know that every situation is different and different levels of dirtiness are also, um, you know, possibilities and most likely what you're dealing with. So, do your own testing, guys. Check out your own ratios. If, if you can't get a product to work properly or how you want it, so for example, if a product isn't slick enough, add more of the concentrate to it so you get your desired slickness. I put my dilution ratios on the bottle for what I use most of the time. And I'm not shy about telling people, like, if you're buying the Infinite Purpose Cleaner, because it makes because you're you're buying one gallon it makes seven gallons you you're you're definitely going to be able to get some really good cleaning done at that dilution ratio however you're probably going to get more cleaning done in a faster time if you add more product to it that's the bottom line strengthen that shit up a little bit bottom line don't take the manufacturer's word for the dilution ratios Figure it out for yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't start there. Those are suggestions. So when you're doing your research on whether you love a product or not, don't put all of your eggs in one basket on using it like the manufacturer says, because they're not, the manufacturer is not in your situation at the time that you're using the product. They don't know what you're doing, and in most cases, they're in a controlled environment, which is not even in real world, which is the difference between my line and most other lines, is I'm using this stuff in real world situations where I'm, you know, I have a paying customer that's giving me money to do the job that I'm doing with the products. So yeah, these are tested in real world situations, the products at detailjuice.com I'm referring to. These other manufacturers, they, they're just put, they're just writing, they're in controlled environments, where they're, you know, they're not, and I'm not talking about all of them. I'm saying a lot of those manufacturers are just, they're putting these labels on these bottles based on, and then writing these directions based on their controlled environment. Uh, the real world is a lot different than a controlled environment. I promise you that. And so that's why my products work so well day in and day out. And that's why so many people use them because I do the real world testing. There's no controlled environment. There's, there's so little control in the environment. It's just mad. It's just sickening sometimes how little control there is over the jobs that I do and you know the different things that I encounter. But don't put a lot of effort into what they recommend. In fact, this could probably help some of you with the products that you're using. Uh, maybe it's not my product. Maybe maybe you wanted to like a product and you just couldn't get it to work well for you, but maybe it was because of that manufacturer's directions. Maybe it was the dilution ratio. Maybe you should think outside the box for one time in your life. That's the problem. Think outside the box a little bit, people. That's what you need to do. The untold truth in detailing. And I'm gonna tell you that truth again and again and again, day in and day out, no bullshit, no sugar coating, pansy ass cake and baby bullshit. I'm not doing that. None of that. I shoot you straight. Most of the problems that you people have as detailers or in the service industry in general, is that you don't think outside the box. You listen to what your buddies tell you, you're listening to what the manufacturer is telling you, but you're not doing your own due diligence to figure things out for yourself. You have got to think outside the box, test, test, test. Spend some time getting to know the products. Take it on a date, love it, kiss it, you never know you may end up loving a product that you never loved before. And this is with anything, not just my products, anybody's products. 
Think outside the box. Do not worry so much about what the label says after you've tried it per the label. Give it a go at a stronger dilution. Give it a go at a lesser dilution. Test it, see what's up. Maybe they're telling you to use even more than you need to use. In which case you can save some money. That's fine, it's good. So anyway, that is the tip for the day. This is the, I don't even know what version this is now, uh, but I haven't done one in a couple of weeks and I wanted to just, you know, I, this has been on my mind, it's important. And uh, I, I need you guys to just start thinking outside the box uh, and, you know, over dilute, under dilute, test, test, test. But don't give up on a product just because uh, the manufacturer's label says something and you couldn't get it to work per the label. Use it differently. Use it in different ways. Maybe you can figure out how to make it work better than it's intended to, be, to, to work. I mean, that's the bottom line. So dilution ratios, concentrates, think outside the box. Thank you so much for watching. If you got any, if you got any questions for me, 813-846-4406. I can't help you unless you use the number. And uh, I really, truly, absolutely, completely, utterly appreciate the support that I get from each and every one of you guys when you watch these videos. I want to help you. This is me wanting to help you. Exactly. So use the phone number. Reach out, send me a text message, or call me. I generally will screen my calls. I get a 500 calls a day. Uh, leave me a voicemail, send me a text message, send me a Facebook message. Check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation on Facebook. It is a group on Facebook where we talk about everything I got going on. Products, processes, everything that's going on in Gary Dean land, again, Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.